Hi guys, it's Carissa and it is time for my week 38 update. Today I am 39 weeks and 3 days. Um, and just a quick reminder because I feel like I do get asked a lot. I always post the date that I filmed these in the description below the video because I don't always post them the same day that I filmed them. Um, and if you want a more current timeline, that's where that is. And I also just posted an update to my Instagram and my Snapchat. So that information is below this video just so that you know, you know, this isn't in real time. I didn't film it and immediately put it online. I wish I could, but there's a little more involved in that. So um, a lot of the time it doesn't go up right away. It is also really funny because I'm finding in all the enthusiasm surrounding our due date upcoming, um, because as of today, when I'm filming, not when you're watching this necessarily, um, we have four days left till, my, till our due date. And I feel like there's a lot of people who seem to think that I would just not tell anybody once she was born. <laughs> my family included, it's really weird. It's the weirdest thing, but we definitely will. We just have no news. Um, as of the time I made this list for week 38, and as of today sitting in front of you, um, I have no signs of labor, so it's gonna be a while. <laughs> it's gonna be a while. Honestly, physically, there's no real signs or changes uh, to my body. I, you know, I have times like I did in the past where I feel more pregnant than others, where I feel more run down and achy and, um, just like slow to get around and to get things done but not that much in a way um I don't know I feel like my general pace isn't that slow and I do have times where I really you know try to make sure that I rest and um I don't really notice anything any different than I did a few weeks ago in week 38 sort of early on I was noticing something that was really bothering me it's not as bad as it was or as consistent, but it's still happening. I was getting hot feet at night real bad. And I know that that's probably a hormonal thing because I know that during fertility treatments and depending on what drugs I was on at the time, I would get hot feet really bad at night also. Um, and I think it is a little bit of an inflammation thing, although I really don't feel that I have any swelling like at all. Maybe a little bit in my face, but I also think that might just be water retention, like weight, water weight. Um, Cause I feel like my face and my nose looks a little bit bigger. Like down here, my face feels bigger, obviously. Um, but I've gained right around 40 pounds in the last three weeks, I believe. Yeah, in the last three weeks, I haven't gained any weight. So, um, you know, if I look at my ankles, they don't look swollen to me. The doctor says that my ankles don't look swollen. I haven't asked her about having the hot feet because honestly, it's just one of those things that I'm sure there's nothing I can really do about. I elevate my feet at night when I sleep and I don't cover them and that's the best I can do, really. The other thing is that I still have a cough. I still don't really have a voice, especially if I talk for an extended period of time. And um, I have a really dry mouth when I sleep at night. I think I'm probably sleeping with my mouth open, which I don't normally do, but I think I've just been congested enough. I feel like I can breathe though. I don't feel congested. It's more like like a post nasal drip thing because my nose feels completely clear and I don't feel sick. And this is sort of the same thing that's been going on. I just have this hacking cough that won't go away. And when I sleep at night, I'm pretty sure I sleep with my mouth open. Um, and it's sort of like a way of preventing myself from coughing myself awake. Um, I don't know what it is. It seems to be aggravated by dust. Mike has gone through and room by room completely cleaned and dusted every single room um, to try and make it a more habitable place for me. But I've noticed if I'm in a car, it doesn't matter how clean the car is on the inside either. If the fans are on at all for heat or whatever, it will make me cough, even if I close the vents. So. There's something to that, I'm guessing. I don't know if it's an allergy thing. Um, I was actually thinking about recently, it would probably be super beneficial for me to get allergy tested in the next year or so if I can carve out some time to do that. I don't know how that goes when you're breastfeeding, if I'm lucky enough to breastfeed, but I think that this 
whole situation I have going on right now might be cough, might, might be cough related, might be allergy related. And the only reason I really bring it up is because that's the only thing that's been bothering me lately. Um, I just, I can't complain about pregnancy. And even if I had stuff to complain about, I wouldn't. I was fully prepared to take on all of the bad stuff and I've mentioned that to you guys plenty of times. I'm so sorry, if I keep looking over there, it's because my father-in-law bought us a like 12 foot Santa Claus, inflatable Santa Claus, and it keeps blowing, I'm still not used to it, it's been up for a couple weeks now, and it keeps moving by the window and scaring the crap out of me. You may notice my, my, my tongue looks purple, um, I've been having to resort to sucking on hard candy to prevent myself from coughing. It's one of the only things that helps, but it doesn't always help, unfortunately. I would stick to sugar-free candy, but I just can't risk having the intestinal upset. It's something that I don't want to have to deal with at all, first of all. Um, and second, if I were to suddenly go into labor and have that going on also, I think I'd really regret it. So, um, I can't have cough drops, and the closest thing is hard candy. It's way more sugar than I'd want in my system, and I really hate the way, you know, I hate having it on my teeth. I'm normally really conscious about that kind of thing. So my teeth have been a little sensitive to all the extra sugar, but sometimes it just needs some relief. I can't stop coughing, and it's like the only thing I can do. So now that I'm losing my voice again, <laughs> it's story time. So in week 38, we had a few incidences of, it, it was like false labor, but it wasn't false labor. It was like false promises of delivery. And my poor husband has learned to not get his hopes up anymore. Um, I'm just kind of blank. I don't know how to process things when I'm told them. I do get excited, of course, but not that excited because I don't fully believe anything I've ever heard. Um, but I've had some stuff go on in the past week or so that had led us to believe that we thought that we would be seeing our little girl sooner. So on the 19th, I had an ultrasound and a non-stress test, just same as I've been doing weekly, to watch for preeclampsia and make sure that our fluid levels are okay. In the ultrasound, I was told that it was beautiful. Um, my fluid level actually went from five to over 10, which is pretty remarkable because it's been around five for a couple of weeks now fluctuating very slightly not enough for them to be concerned then I went into the non-stress test they found her heartbeat right away she was still head down um, everything was looking great her non-stress test was going beautifully the the woman who was running it was very good she was like one of the only ones who actually explained to me what was going on um, and told me what she was looking for and explained to me how everything worked and I, I appreciated that and she kept saying how great everything looked on the screen, uh, really enthusiastically, almost like, I don't know, maybe she was, maybe she just is like that, but it almost seemed like she was surprised. It was almost like she just doesn't see it very often or wasn't expecting it, so it felt really good. And then she took my blood pressure. So I was kind of riding a little bit of a high because between having a great ultrasound and having the NST go so well, I was feeling really good. And I had all these plans for what I was going to do that afternoon. And she said that my blood pressure was concerning. And she seemed real concerned after she took it. She took it twice. And I always expect that they're going to tell me it's a little high. But she told me that it was 166 over 100. And that's really high. I'm normally in the 130 to 135 over 80 to 85 range. So that was a big jump. She called my doctor who happened to be on call at the hospital that day and she sent me to labor and delivery triage. We had done this a few times before so I had thought no big deal. But they took it a little bit more seriously than usual. Um, they took my blood pressure more than once. They ran a non-stress test of their own for, for about an hour. Normally they only look at 20 minutes of data but they ran it for an hour. Um, and then they took a urine sample, which did end up having protein in it. So here I was thinking, they're going to induce me, um, or at the very least not let me go home. But my doctor came in to see me while she was there and said that between my blood pressure being high and the protein in my urine, I should expect to be induced within the next few days. While I was in the hospital, my blood pressure went down. It, would, it went to 
So from the 166 over 100, it went 170 over 84, or 177 over 84. And then before I left, they took it again, and it was 144 over 75. Now, the reason they didn't keep me there was because the protein in my urine was at 2.9, and I guess three or higher is what they consider to be, you know, like a preeclampsia level. So they had me collect my urine for 24 hours again, and I learned that my last collection, my last 24 hour collection I did in early November, I think, they couldn't do the lab on it because it was too watered down. So I drank too much water. So I made sure in the 24 hour period after being discharged from the hospital to drink soda and juice um, and alternate it with water, not drink just water which wasn't fun because I just sort of prefer water, but I drank some red raspberry leaf tea. I just alternated beverages and made sure not to drink too much so um, that I could get an accurate reading for the lab. Oh guys, I am suffering here. I just cannot, where's my voice? <laughs> In addition to not having a voice, the coughing fits are pretty hilarious because every now and then when I have a real good coughing fit, the baby, I can tell she's just like, enough. I can just tell. She starts moving around and punching me and stuff. <laughs> so I had a follow up, that was on Monday, and I had a follow up with my OB on Wednesday, my weekly visit anyway, that was my week 39 visit. And she had said, just go home and rest. Don't go shopping, don't do house chores. Just go lay on the couch and watch Netflix, is what she said, and that's what I did. Um, it was killing me, because I still had Christmas presents to wrap. Um, I still had, I still had a lot of stuff to do, or just stuff that I would have liked to do. But I listened to her, I just laid on the couch and watched TV. Um, then when I went in to see her the next day, my blood pressure was still high. I think it was 150 over 90. And I still, my, I guess I had protein in my urine from the lab, the 24 hour lab that we took. And that level was 240. So I don't know what the, I don't know how they gauge that because before it was 2.9 and then it was 240. That sounds like way higher. But it must have been on a different measurement system. But she said that that was normal. Mike and I had gone into that appointment thinking, there's no way that I'm going home today. I had protein in my ear and it's probably not going to stop happening. And how is my blood pressure going to be lower? Or, you know, if this is the onset of preeclampsia, which they seemed pretty positive it was on Monday, we're like, we're probably going to have a baby in the next two days. And Mike was so excited. He cleaned the house spotless. He packed the car. All, he packed all of our stuff. He was so excited. And we went to my appointment, and my doctor said, you are 0% dilated, about 50% effaced. You've had no signs of labor. You don't have preeclampsia. We're just gonna wait and see what happens. And honestly, that's fine. We're both fine with that. We have waited this long for her. We will wait. We'll wait. We don't care. Um, I would rather not force things. Mike did run out and buy me a pineapple because I told him that some women claim pineapple helps to um, helps to put them into labor or dilate them. And I cannot eat any more pineapple. It wrecked the inside of my mouth. Oh my gosh. Oh. I never want to eat pineapple again. <laughs> but um, honestly, a lot of that stuff, a lot of the things people swear by, I think it's probably just a coincidence. And every person is different. Every woman's body is different. So I'm not going to make myself nuts and try and exhaust myself walking around and going up and down the stairs and eating weird foods. I'm not going to do any of that. I did start evening primrose oil. Um which I probably should have done a while ago, just in case that helps, but honestly, I'm just waiting patiently to meet my baby girl. Um, she'll get here when she's ready, and I can tell she's not ready, so. Um, the doctor did say she could feel her head was right there, but I'm not dilated at all. And my doctor is not gonna be around after this week for the holiday, so I am seeing someone else next week on Tuesday, I believe. So we'll see what they say, but I have a feeling it's still going to be sort of a waiting game. I am really sad, however, that I'm not going to, I'm choosing to not attend Christmas Eve tomorrow. We have a big family party. I really love it every year and look forward to it. Um, we have a lot of reason to celebrate this year, you know. 
but my nieces have had pink eye on and off um, for the last like two weeks and who knows what anybody else might be sick with and I just don't want to risk picking up anything more than what I'm dealing with already um, before actually going into labor or having to be induced or whatever ends up happening so I'm really really sad about it and I keep going back and forth but I know that the best thing to do is to not go to Christmas Eve so I'm really sad about that but um, I kind of hoped that it would be I really hoped that she would have been here by now but um, that's just me being impatient I just want to meet her so bad um, but I'm really sad about Christmas but hopefully that's okay it's okay we'll have a good Christmas next year I did finish my nurse gifts I only made eight of them I don't know how long I'll be in the hospital but I also made poor judgment on the wrapping for them we had previously been told that I'd have a c-section on the 20th if she was still breached and she wasn't breached anymore then I was told that I'd be induced in the next few days which meant I would have had her at the latest by today um, and now who knows when she'll get here. Two weeks after her due date, I think is January 10th. So I'm kind of mentally expecting she won't be here any later than that. So, but I wrapped the nurse gifts in Christmas, <laughs> in the Christmas bags. It's just junk food. It's just candy. And, um, and it's sweets. But, um, I figured that those would be nice to have to give to the staff. And hopefully there's less than eight people that come in the room because uh, we didn't make more than that. I'm pretty sure at this point you can barely understand me anymore. So I'm going to end this video. That's pretty much all I had to say anyway. But I hope everybody has a wonderful holiday, whatever you celebrate. Um, I hope you're all enjoying this time and I hope you're really enjoying the season with your family and your friends. Um, and no matter what's going on, that you found something really positive to focus on and to celebrate and be um, and be grateful for. I know that we had some really hard Christmases the last few years and um, I know how it feels. So I'm just reaching out to all of you guys. I hope it's wonderful for everybody. And I will update you guys when I have more information. So thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.